Web development, that's what we're doing today. We're testing the M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch, 64 gigs of RAM against the M2 Pro MacBook Pro 16 inch, 64 gigs of RAM. Let's see how it's gonna work for web development. And this was actually a recommendation from a commenter. This looks pretty good. I haven't tried this out yet, so we're gonna kick things off with this one. Then we're gonna actually do some code builds. We're gonna do a huge mono repo build and I'll button things up at the end with my own personal project. It's actually a Gatsby website built on React. So we'll see how long that takes. I'm gonna start this and um, yeah, there we go. It started. <laughs> what the heck is this? Well, let me tell you about it while it's running. Whoa, that's a draw call stress test. It does test like this, quick redraws. I'm expecting the M1 Max to do a little bit better in this particular test. Now, just to give you an idea of what this test is all about, it's a comprehensive web browser performance benchmark that tests how well your mobile or desktop system can use web-based applications. It's got various system and graphic tests that use web recommendations and features. Pretty cool test. And we have our first results, which is a lot quicker than I imagined. And I was wrong. I was wrong because we got a score of 1891 on the M1 Max and 1910 on the M2 Pro. Impressive. This machine costs a lot less than this machine. Now moving on to our next benchmark, it's gonna be Jetstream 2. I really like testing this one because it gives us a fine grain breakdown of all the different modules it tests. This one also includes WebAssembly, which is getting very popular and it's important to know this stuff. So JavaScript tests as well as WebAssembly are included here. Ah, let's go. You've seen me run this test uh, on the M2 MacBook Airs. If you're curious to see those results, they're available on the channel as well. I may include my M2 MacBook Air with some other tests that I'm gonna be doing. If you wanna see more of that compared to this machine, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you like this content, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I do have to ask for that because some of you forget to do that and I appreciate it. Consider subscribing to the channel. We're gonna be doing a heck of a lot more tests like this with new machines coming out, the MacBooks, there's new Intel machines coming out. We'll see how they do. <laughs> We've got scores for Jetstream 2 and wow, again, I, I'm actually a little bit, uh, I'm pretty impressed about this. <laughs> 276 for Jetstream 2 on the M1 Max and 307 on the M2 Pro reconsidering life choices. This M2 Pro is looking pretty good. But if you're just doing web development, wow, this is this is good. I'm gonna scroll down the window here in case you wanna see breakdowns of any of these scores in particular. Here's the uh, scroll down, the gentle slow scroll down for the M1 Max. And here's a slow scroll down of the M2 Pro. Slow down the video here if you wanna see that in detail. You can see that uh, regexp got a higher score uh, TypeScript got a higher score. Uglify got a higher score here. Wow, pretty much everything got a higher score. I don't see a single lower score. Ah, this one. Hashset Wasm got a lower score, but uh, that could be just a one-time thing. I don't know, because Quicksort in Wasm got 737 and only 466 on the M1 Max. That's a huge difference. Moving on, there is another test under Browser Bench called Motion Mark. We're gonna do that real quick before we move on to our real world scenarios here. And this one is very pretty to look at. I like this one. Notice the temperatures here. Both machines are about 54 degrees Celsius. 55 now, 49, around there. And fans are off. Fans have been off the whole time. We'll see if the fans kick in when I start doing the actual builds on the machine. Typically you'd think that those builds are gonna be single core, but they're not. The M2 single core is faster than the single core of the M1 Max. That's just the nature of the new design, the new chip. But the builds we're doing, even though they're JavaScript builds, they're going to be requiring more than one node process running at the same time. And therefore it's, it's considered a multi-core build. That said, the new M2 Pro does have 12 cores as opposed to 10 on the M1 Max. The two extra cores are efficiency cores, but they might just be able to help out here. We're gonna see that in a moment. And I should probably mention what this beautiful test is doing. Motion Mark is a graphic benchmark that measures a browser's capability to animate complex scenes at a target frame rate. This is more of an animation in the browser test. 
So if you're doing visualizations, 3D graphics or 2D graphics, charts and so on, this is a good test for you to know about. Of course, when you're doing development work, this is handy, but you're doing development work to deploy to clients and whatever the clients have is what matters for the actual display. Even though you have this powerful computer that you're gonna get for your development work, you might wanna also test it on a crappy computer just to see what your beautiful animations will look like there. I don't know, just, just a suggestion. I, I don't know, what, what do I know? I don't know anything. I'm just a button pressing guy. Well, we've got a winner, 1370 on the M1 Max and 1191 on the M2 Pro. M1 Max regains the victory when it comes to web animations. Let's move on. The next test is a large monorepo. Yes, this is a monorepo that contains many different projects. And in fact, this particular test, um, it's on Victor Sofkin's GitHub. Uh, I can actually link it down below if you're curious. This one is gonna test a few different monorepos. NX, which is their product, Turbo Repo, which is um, a new one as of last year. Uh, we've got Lerna, and there's another one that it tests that it doesn't list. Oh, Le Lage? Lage? How do you pronounce that? L-A-G-E. I don't know. I've never heard of that one actually until now. This particular monorepo is designed to test Turbo Repo against Lerna, against NX to see which one is faster. Uh, but it doesn't matter to us. Basically what it does is rebuild multiple times. It's using the Webpack processes, which a lot of us web developers are using these days. And we have to wait for those builds to finish. And that's the most frustrating part, right? So that's what we're gonna try to compare between these two machines. If you're curious, this repo contains five shared buildable packages with 250 components each and five Next.js applications built of 20 app specific libraries and each app specific library has 250 components each. So there's, it's, it's big. There's about 26,000 components total. These are small components, but uh, there's a lot of them. Just gonna give you a quick look at what this looks like. We have uh, package.json, which exposes this uh, node benchmark call. It just basically runs through loops over and builds these monorepos one at a time, several times each. So that's what we're gonna execute. And I'm gonna give it the time command so we get the overall time to compare at the end. Time npm run benchmark. And I'm certainly not gonna miss out on the opportunity to use our friend Schwarzenegger 2.0. All right, we're all set, let's go. Love using that thing. It's just one button, it presses the keys at the same time, so there's no question that they were pressed at the same time. This is a little bit uh, unexpected. Now you can see what was happening here. <laughs> Clearly this project ran on mostly on the efficiency cores. And since the new M2 Pro has double the number of efficiency cores as the M1 Max, it was a lot faster. Look at this, 35 seconds, 35.2, on the M2 Pro to complete that entire test. Wow, two minutes and 18 seconds on the M1 Max. Now I'm gonna rerun this because it seems a little odd that it would be that much faster, even though it's kind of clear by the, by the pictures there, by the graphics of the efficiency cores and the CPU history, what's going on and why this could be happening. I still want to rerun this and see if this was just some crazy fluke. Well, uh, this one's done, 46 seconds this time, but this one, one minute and 15 seconds. So a big difference for both of them. This one went down quite a lot. This one went up by 10 seconds or 11. I'm going to do this one more time. Also, take a look at the temperatures here. On this machine, the fan spun up the second time around and now we're at 1500 RPM. On this one, the fan is still off. So there's some kind of tolerance at play here where this one slowed down a little bit and the fans were off, so that makes sense. This one, the fans kicked on and it sped up a little bit. So maybe that has something to do with it. Let's do it again. By the way, have you ever wondered what JavaScript frameworks are the fastest? I did do a stream about this last year, but I think things are changing this year and it might be time to update and put out a new video. What do you think? Would you like to see that? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, we're done folks. Oh, okay. The initial excitement has already died down because we're not getting consistent results here. And I don't know why. One minute, four seconds over here on the new M2 Pro and one minute, 28 seconds on the M1 Max. I'm gonna do one more test and I'm gonna max out the fans on both of these machines. It's gonna get really loud in here. We're gonna go to maximum fans. 
I don't know which one of these is going to be louder, but we're at 5,500 RPM on the fans. This way, both of them are spinning. Let's go. This is never really the case, though. You never... <laughs> I've never heard the fans kick up like this in my entire year of using this machine. I never hear this machine. Completely synthetic here, but just to get an equal footing. All right, well, we got one that finished already, and I think you know which one it is. It looks like we've kind of stabilized around a time. Let me turn these fans off. That's just crazy. It's too loud in here. That's better. Okay. So we've stabilized on 1 minute and 11 seconds here on the M2 Pro and 1 minute 40 seconds. So this one is faster. It's been faster all along. One thing that still doesn't look consistent to me is the performance versus efficiency core usage. These graphs. Initially it was all efficiency. Now it's kind of spread out among all the cores. I wonder if the system is learning that I'm doing this a lot over and over again and giving more of the tasks to the performance course. Maybe. But we're moving on. We're moving on to my own project. This is my website for native script courses, nativescripting.com, and it's built on Gatsby. And Gatsby is built on React. And this one, uh, it takes a while. I have like 150 plus, maybe 190 articles in there that need to be parsed and built and images and everything needs to be processed. I'm going to run the command npm run clean first. So we get a nice clean cache. A clean cache is a lack of cash. <laughs> and then time npm run build. Okay, we're all set up here. Let's get our friend back in here to do the honors. And we're ready to go. Boom. You know, it'd be fun if I built some kind of a remote button that would trigger this via the internet and do a live stream. So you all can trigger Schwarzenegger. That'd be cool. We are done. And I think that I'm actually going to get a little bit of a benefit if I switch to the M2 Pro here. Not too much, but a little bit. 51 seconds on the M2 Pro, 55 seconds on the M1 Max. If you scale this up, I guess this kind of a uh, process is going to help me out. I'm going to run this one more time just to see what's going on for getting consistent numbers. And yeah, looks about right. 50.8 seconds here, 55.1 over here. If this was helpful to you, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And thanks for watching, folks. This is fun, and I will be back. <laughs>